Hello, I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter. Over the next few months, my office will be producing a series of ESL classes that specialize in helping Brockton residents acquire English skills to increase employment opportunities. This class is called English for Employment. This represents an unprecedented partnership between the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, CareerWorks, the Brockton Public Schools, Brockton Community Access, and the Mayor's Office. We hope you find this series useful as we continue our mission to bring vital services to the residents of the City of Brockton. If you are late for your job interview, forget it. You will not get hired. <laughs> Now, if something happens, Junior makes a very good point. Um, punctuality is the key. I get many calls, because I've taught this class for about 15 years, I get many calls from employers um, asking for references for some of my former students. And one question that every employer asks me is, is this person on time for class? Employers want to know that this employee is going to show up on time for work. Does this person have good attendance? Because that's so important in the work world. They, they're not looking to hire people who are going to be late every day. But sometimes you get a flat tire. <laughs> sometimes your babysitter doesn't show up on time. I was almost late today because of traffic on Route 24. I live in East Taunton and sometimes trucks roll over on Route 24. Um, if that happens, what can you do? You have to call, right. Make sure you have on you the employer's phone number, the person's phone number that you're going to interview with and be sure that you call. Pull off the road and call. Uh, I'm sorry, my car has a flat tire. Don't leave them guessing. You know, where's my next appointment? We don't know where they are. Don't call the next day and say, sorry, I had a flat tire, I couldn't make it. That's too late. You know, call. I'm sorry, I had an emergency. Can I reschedule my, my interview? If you call, it's okay. If you don't show up or if you show up 15 minutes late, <clears throat> you risk not getting that job at all. So punctual, you're right, Junior. Punctuality is very, very important. All right, because we're all second language speakers and pronunciation and confidence are very important, we're going to read together. <laughs> Let's do it. Ready? Body language and personal appearance. Together. Here we go. Ready? All right, wake up everybody. I know it's Friday. <laughs> We're going to focus on good vowel sounds and also good final consonant sounds. Remember, we're not going to say five dollars. <laughs> five dollars. Good final consonant sounds. Body language. Body language. Good confidence. Body language. Body language. And personal appearance. And personal appearance. When you meet a manager, when you meet a manager your, English language is important. your English language is important. But your body language is important too. But your body language is important too. For example, For example if, you smile, if you smile, the manager will think you are friendly. The manager will think you are friendly. If you make eye contact, if you make eye contact look at the manager's face, look at the manager's face and, stand straight, and stand straight, the manager will think that you are confident. The manager will think that you are confident. Next paragraph. Your personal appearance, Your personal appearance also says something about you. Also say something about you. For example, For example, your hair should look nice. Your hair should look nice. And your clothes should be neat and professional. And your clothes should be neat and professional. If you are careful with your personal appearance, if you are careful with your personal appearance, the manager will think, the manager will think that, you will that you will be careful with your job too. 
Now let's talk for a moment about clothes. About clothes. Could I, would I wear this to a job interview? I'll do my modeling. <laughs> would I wear this to a job interview? No pants? No jeans? No, not jeans. They're regular pants, but they're not they're not dress pants. They're they're kind of casual pants. And a sweater. And a t shirt. Mm, I probably wouldn't. Mm, nah. Almost, almost, but not quite. I probably would not. I probably would not. Um, now, many of the teachers that I work with, would. this is what I wear to teach. And many of the teachers that I work with wear, on a day-to-day -day basis, this kind of clothes. Um, not too casual, but not too dressy. However, for an interview, I would not wear this. I would wear probably either a dress, something a little dressier. I would wear a blouse, not a t-shirt. I might wear a jacket. Um, I, I would wear dressier pants. And I would probably wear shoes with a heel. I, I run around a lot and carry a lot of things, so I have flat, you probably can't see it, I have flat, sh comfortable shoes on. Um, for men, uh, women could wear a dress, a skirt, and a blouse. Dress pants are fine, um, but this is a little bit too casual. It's comfortable, but it's casual. <laughs> uh, how about men? What would a man, man wear for a job interview? What would be a good thing for a man to wear? Always a tie. Always a tie. Dress shirt and a tie. What kind of pants? A suit would be great. A suit, if not a, a formal suit, maybe a sport jacket. A sport jacket is fine. And it's not. No sneakers. No sneakers. Dress shoes, no jeans. No jeans. Could wear a dress shirt and a tie, a sport jacket, or a suit if it's a, you know, if it's a, a very important job, a, a suit. But a sport jacket is fine too. Now, what if I'm applying for a job as an auto mechanic? What if I'm going to clean cars and I'm going to change oil for a living? That's the job that I want. Do I have to wear a sport jacket and a suit and a, and a, and a tie? Uh, I, I think so. The first day you can go into yeah. work. You are for the interview. You can, you can put on your the, the same. Same you get the gold star, Ezekiel, because it's not the job, it's the interview. Yeah. Always dress for an interview. Why? Why do you say that, Ezekiel? You're right. You're right. Why? Because you're you not for, 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 uh, for the work. You're not for an, an interview. Right. And what does that interview, what are you doing when you dress up for an interview? What are you, remember, you send a message with the clothes that you choose. Good impression. Good impression. Yes. It shows respect. Yes. It shows respect for the interviewer. It shows respect for the job. It shows, I care enough, I want this job and this position badly enough that I care enough to, to dress up and to try to really make a good impression on you. My son, when he was 16, he applied for a job at Dunkin' Donuts. And I said, put on, he, it was his first job, he, didn't, he said, what should I wear? And I said, put on a dress shirt and a tie. And he said, Mom, it's Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> said, That's right. I said, I don't care. I said, put on a shirt and a tie. And he got the job. <laughs> now, maybe he got the job because he was a good kid, and, but I said, you know, it doesn't hurt. Because you're showing respect for your interviewer. Uh, you make a great first impression. It doesn't matter what job you're going for. Now, when you show up for work on the first day as an auto mechanic, no, you're not going to wear a shirt and a tie. You're going to wear your work clothes. But for an interview, always dress better than whatever it is that the job you're going to have. And it'll tell you that in this next part. All right, let's continue. You can wear different kinds of clothes for different jobs. Let's read together. You can wear different kinds of clothes 
It is a good idea to find out what people usually wear for the job you are applying for. When you meet a manager, always wear clothes that are a little nicer Always wear clothes that are a little nicer than the clothes people usually wear for that job. Than the clothes people usually wear for that job. Women usually wear a dress, Women usually wear a, dress. a skirt and a blouse, a skirt and a blouse. Or, a suit. or a suit. Men usually wear a jacket. Men usually wear a jacket. Tie and nice pants. Tie and nice pants. Or a suit. And you knew that. You told me that before. <laughs> now, if you don't have those things, there are places where you can get a nice jacket, nice tie, nice suit. Um, they have some nice things. Um, I, I've gotten nice things at Walmart. I've gotten nice things. Um, that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a nice outfit. I know some people say, oh, I can't afford to get those things, but you can get some pretty nice things uh, that look very, very professional, very inexpensively. Don't think you have to break the bank to get, to get nice clothes, because <laughs> I've gotten some really cheap stuff. <laughs> and don't, just don't tell anyone where you got it. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Here are some things to remember when you meet a manager. Here are some things to remember when you meet the manager. First, look professional. Look professional. Wear conservative clothes. Wear conservative clothes. Jewelry. Jewelry. And makeup. And makeup. Men, you don't wear a lot of makeup and jewelry. Don't worry. <laughs> what do we mean by conservative? Conservative clothes. Basic. Classic. Classic. Right. You're not going to wear something Jennifer Lopez would wear to the Daytime Emmy Awards, you know. <laughs> Nothing too low cut, ladies. You know, men, not a lot of gold chains, you know, not the big earrings, just very classic things. Because you never know who's going to do your interview. It might be someone who is very conservative, might be somebody older, somebody younger. So best to be conservative in the middle. Smile and make eye contact. Smile and make eye contact. Did Judy do the handshake with you? Yes. Okay, so everyone knows how to do. No, no dead fish, right? <laughs> Give a firm handshake. Give a firm handshake. Not too soft and not too hard. Not too soft and not too hard. Stand two to three feet away from the manager. Stand two to three feet away. From the and speak clearly. Speak clearly. Sometimes, you ever notice that sometimes when we don't speak well, we mumble a little bit. We, do, we talk like this a little bit. <laughs> My first teaching job was in Quito, Ecuador. When I first graduated from college, I went to Ecuador in South America to teach. And I didn't speak Spanish well at all. I think I could count to 10 and say hola, and that was all the Spanish that I could speak. <laughs> And so when I had to speak Spanish, I was really embarrassed. And so I decided that if I spoke Spanish like this and people, wouldn't, people would, couldn't hear me, they wouldn't know I was making mistakes. So whenever I had to say anything, I said, well, I said in Spanish, I said, they said, oh, they won't know I'm making a mistake. So everybody said, we can't hear you. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> so be sure, even if you make a mistake in English, it doesn't matter. Better to speak loudly and confidently and make a mistake than to mumble like this and have people say, well, huh? we can't hear you. <laughs> so don't worry about making mistakes. People will respect the fact that you speak more than one language. Um, when, if you drop off an S at the end of a verb, so what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> and finally, be enthusiastic. Be enthusiastic. Right, even if you're tired, even if you didn't get your cup of coffee in the morning, when you go into that interview, enthusiastic. Yes. Enthusiastic. And finally, this is very, very true. You never get a second chance. You never get a second chance. 
to make a first impression. And we saw that this morning with our five bank tellers, right? So you looked at them and said, nope, 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 yes. <laughs> and that was without even looking at a resume or an application. So, and remember, you're in control. You're the one who controls what they see and what they think when, they, when you walk in the door. So, and if you're not sure, practice with a friend or a family member or somebody that you trust and say, you know, what do you think of this outfit? Or will you practice an interview with me? You know, can I, can I answer some questions and tell me honestly what you think? And they'll help you. And, and the more prepared you are when you go into that interview, the better that your confidence will be. And I hope by the end of this course, you'll all feel more confident because you're gonna really know what that interview is gonna be like. Do you have any questions so far? Claire? The first part of that, is if you smile, the manager will think you are friendly. And the last part of that, the second, uh, the smile and the eye contact. Mm -hmm. The first part, I say, if you smile, the manager will think you are friendly. Uh-huh. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yes. Okay. Yep. You want the manager to think that you're smart, you're friendly and confident. Okay. Friendly and confident. Okay. Other questions? Any vocabulary? Any questions about vocabulary? Please don't be afraid to, to ask any questions or stop me. I tell my students that, too, in class. Because we're all on different levels in terms of English fluency. If there's a word or something that you're curious about, just say, huh, what does this mean? And I'll, I'll stop and explain it. All right, let's flip it over. Things to do and not do for a job interview. So most of these are kind of repetitive, but we'll go through them anyway. First of all, the do's. Let's repeat them together, good confident voices. Do, look clean and neat. Let's repeat it. Good final consonants. Look clean. Look clean. Where'd everybody go? <laughs> Look clean. Look clean. And neat. And neat. Good pronunciation. Come alone. Come alone. Very important. Don't bring your brother-in-law. Don't bring your translator. Don't bring your kids. <laughs> Number three. This one was juniors. Come early. Come early. Don't come too early. Don't come like 45 minutes early and hang out in the parking lot so they think you don't have a life. <laughs> if you arrive too early, go to the coffee shop next door and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> 15 minutes is perfect. 15 minutes is perfect. And that way you can check in, sit down, you know, look over your resume. 15 minutes is perfect. <laughs> Number four, wear clean, pressed business clothes. Wear clean, pressed business clothes. Give me a good final consonant, pressed. Pressed. What does pressed mean? What's a synonym, another word for pressed? Iron. Ironed. 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 Right. Ironed. Pressed is another word for ironed, with no wrinkles. Number five. This is so important. Practice answering questions at home. Practice answering questions at home. That you think you will be asked. That you think you will be asked. I'm going to give you in the next few weeks a lot of questions. And you can also, when you have a job interview coming up, take those questions out of your book and review them. Number six, bring a list of questions. Bring a list of questions. To ask the employer about the job. To ask the employer about the job. Did you know, I mean, you know that the employer is going to ask you questions, but did you know that you're supposed to ask the employer questions too? They'll ask you, do you have any questions for me? And you should never say no. <laughs> A lot of people do, they say, no, 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 I don't. <laughs> oh no, you should always ask them questions. Always ask a question. Um, but it has to be the right question. What's one question you should never ask in the first interview? Anybody know? Um, how much? How much, how much? Right. Never ask about money. 
in this culture. I've, I've had students in my class go, oh, I always ask about money. <laughs> I had a lady from Panama the other day. She said, in my country, that's the first thing you say. How much are you going to pay me? <laughs> and I said, well, in this country, you really don't do that so much. Um, that's one thing. In the first interview, we never ask about money. It's kind of like the first date. They're getting to know you. You're getting to know them. And they haven't offered the job yet. So it's considered not good to ask about money in the first interview. But there are other questions, good questions, you can ask about the company. You can ask things like, what kind of training would I need? Is overtime available? Uh, when would I start? When are you going to let me know? Or when are you planning to make your decision about this position? You know, ask questions that show you're really interested in the job. And of course, the one thing we all want to know is how much are you going to pay me, but you can't ask that. <laughs> Culturally, that's a no-no. <laughs> <After they, laughs> look how he's laughing. After they offer you the job, they should let you know that. They should let you know that after they offer you the job. But during the first interview, it's considered kind of a taboo to ask anything about money. Can I ask uh, how much vacation are you going to give me? No. Do you offer health insurance? No. No. How many breaks do I get? You know, I need to get my, have my smoking break. How many breaks am I going to get? Not a good question. Nah. <laughs> so you want to have one or two questions. You want to have one or two questions in your mind, in the back of your mind to ask that are questions that show interest in the company. A good one is what kind of training would I need? Or is something about overtime? Or is there room for advancement in this company that show that you, you're really interested in the company. And we'll talk more about that. I'm going to give you a list um, of some questions that One you question. could ask. Yes? What will happen if the money they're going to give you is not correct for you? Well, you have some choices to make then. <laughs> they, um, you're talking about after the second interview. If they offer you yes, yes, yes. some money. There are a couple of things that you can do. Now, there is a website that you can go on ahead of time and kind of get an idea. It's called masscis.gov. If you're applying for a job and you're not sure what the pay is, you should always try to do a little bit of research up front and find out what, for example, I, I always use a CNA because so many of my students are CNAs. What could a CNA expect to be offered expect to make in the Brockton area. So if you go and you look on this website, it'll give you an idea that maybe a CNA average, in the average. average, like an average. So you have an idea if they're going to make you a fair offer or not. So if you get there and they say, well, we'll we're going to offer you $8 an hour. And you know that in a CNA in the Brockton area usually makes anywhere from 11 to 15 or $16 an hour. You know that that's low then you can counter with, well, it's my understanding that CNAs in this area average between 11 and $16 an hour. I have 20 years experience as a CNA. Is that salary negotiable? So you can put, kind of put it back in their lap. You can ask, is the salary negotiable? Or is there room for advancement? If they say no, it's firm, then you have two choices. You can say, I'll take it, or you can say, thank you very much, very politely. Uh, I appreciate your time, but I have to turn the job down. And sometimes it's negotiable. Sometimes they will, you know, based on your experience, if they really are interested, they'll negotiate with you over salary, especially if you have experience. Um, sometimes, in a, like in a case of a CNA or a forklift operator or someone who has a special skill, you can say, well, I have a certificate, or I, I have a... Uh, I have a medications license or I have a, some type of a special certification that others don't have. You can throw that into the mix and say, well, I, I have this special certification. Is it negotiable because of this? So if possible, you can, you can try to negotiate the salary as well. And that would be a good question to ask Judy when she comes back. She's got a little bit more experience even than I do in that, in that aspect. 
But do know, that's one thing, do a little bit of homework when you go in, especially if you know, if you have friends who work at this company, better yet, you know, find out what's the going rate, what do they usually pay, so that you know before they make you an offer if it's fair or not, if it's a fair offer or not. The other thing to consider before you go into a job interview is what kind of position do you want and is this a company, how badly do you want to work for this place? For example, I, um, we had this conversation in my class at the Adult Learning Center yesterday. Um, we had a CNA and she really wants to get into a hospital. And she said, well, one thing about working in hospitals, it's a good situation to work in a hospital. A lot of people want to get into hospitals to work. And one CNA had a, an offer to go to work in the hospital. She said, take anything you can get. Any, off, any job they offer you, even if it's in the laundry room or in the mail room, you know, take a job in the hospital. And then watch the, post, the job posting board because every week they post job openings in these big hospitals in Boston. You know, there are always a lot of turnover. Employees come and go and come and go and then keep applying. But at least your foot is in the door at an entry level position and once you're in, they know you and they see that you're a good worker and they know that you're reliable and you can move up the ladder. And that was the advice of um, someone who had been in that position. So there are different ways to negotiate that. You know, sometimes it depends on what you can afford to do too. Sometimes you can't afford to take a job if it pays too low. Don't talk too much at the interview. Don't talk too much. Did you know that you can be too quiet? Yes. No? Yes? No? No? Yeah. But you can also talk too much. Yes. Don't do that either. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm 56 years old and I have two kids and they're both in college and oh man, do I have a headache this morning because I didn't get any coffee, but that's okay. I'm here for an interview. What do you want to know? Don't do that either. <laughs> Answer only the questions that they ask. Talk only about your work experience and things that are relevant to the job. Don't, tell, don't talk too much. <laughs> All right, next one, number six. Don't ask too many questions about lunch. <laughs> about lunch, breaks, and vacations. <laughs> number seven, don't chew gum, smoke, or show nervous habits. What do we mean by nervous habits? Yeah, some people crack their knuckles. They go and they don't even realize they're doing it. <laughs> or this? No. Yeah. Or let me see. Sometimes sometimes we do things like this. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have one of those pens that clicks, people do that. My nervous habit is I you can I can't show you. If I'm sitting down, I wiggle my foot. Anybody do that? I'm not the only one. And I have to really be careful because I figure I'm it's under the table, nobody can see it. But then I'm going like this. <laughs> so people can see it. It seems like a stress to you. You have too much stress. Right. And I don't want people to think I'm stressed. So, so I have to I have to make sure I keep my feet on the floor. <laughs> and something in my hands so that I can make sure that I'm not <laughs> doing this. That's another good reason to take your portfolio with you because you have something to hold on to and keep those nervous habits at bay. All right, number eight, don't look down when you speak. Don't look down when you speak. Sometimes when we get nervous and, and we don't feel comfortable making eye contact, we say, well, somebody asks a question and we look down when we answer. That happens a lot when I ask students to speak to me in class. I'll ask somebody to answer a question and they'll, they'll answer the question and they'll do this or they'll do this. And I don't think they even realize they're doing it, but that can be very unnerving to a person who's listening to you. When somebody's speaking to you and, and they won't look at you. So be sure that, don't look down. Confidence, eye contact, and that's something that you can really learn to do well with practice.